Welcome to Ask Him Akurilo program. In this program, as a viewer, you have opportunity to submit any question related to scholarship opportunities and or education overseas. And today we have our opportunity to get the question from one of you from India. And this is the email from the viewer. Hello, sir. This is Bizwadeep from India. I just saw your video on YouTube. It was although very helpful in knowing about GRI, but I wanted to contact you personally for all the inquiries that are cycling around my mind. First of all, sir, I want to know that what is GRI all about and what are the opportunities that I will be getting if I appear for this examination. Second, I want to know that what will happen if I get selected in this examination, suppose, and what are the further steps and advantages that I will be getting for my selection. Thirdly, sir, I will be very grateful if you could tell me about the scholarship monthly salary system in course of studying, if there are any and the fees uh, required for the entire process. I'm eagerly waiting for your reply, sir. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for your question, Biswadeep from India. Uh, you have a couple of questions, but I'm going to group these questions into three main things. One, uh, all questions are related to GRI, I will answer those. And second, I will talk about the issue of money, like you asked about the monthly salary. And thirdly, I will talk about the uh, the fees required for the entire process. So, because there are things I think I don't get clear, or you might be misinformed with the information about scholarship and the GRI in general. So, in order not to confuse, I have grouped those questions into three main areas. So, let me start with the GRI related questions. One, what is GRI? Uh, GRI is an abbreviation for graduate record examination. This is one of the exam, but mostly this exam is used in North America, particularly in the US education system and Canada. It is not very common this exam in Europe or other parts of the world, but mostly this exam is in, is in America, American education system. Who is supposed to take this exam? And what does this exam contain? Uh, and a, as I said, it is a graduate record examination. So it is examination for graduate applicants or graduate students. So who takes it? So I have gone to the main website of GRI, which is www.its.org slash GRI. So they say who takes the test. So I'm going to read. Prospective graduate and business school applicants from around the world Take the GRI reversed general test. Applicants come from varying education and cultural backgrounds, and the GRI reversed general test provides a common measure for comparing candidates' qualifications. So the main purpose of the exams is to compare candidates' qualification. Why? Because people are coming from varying education and cultural backgrounds. You are from India, I'm originally from Tanzania, there is someone from Sweden, someone from uh, Guatemala, someone from uh, any place from, we have different education background and different cultural background. Even if we have G, 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 GPA as a measure, but in US education system, they use GRI as one among the way on how to compare, to have a common factor to compare candidates. So this kind of exam uh, is taken by that way. But mostly when it comes to business school, or course related to management, there is another exam, it's called GMAT, Graduate Management Admission Test. But for the matter of this video, I'm not going to talk about GMAT, I'm talking only about GRI. Because GRI is a general test, it's not for people who are planning to do management, like MBA, no. This is general, so it's non-management program. So if you plan to take a master's or PhD for non-management program, but mostly if you plan to study in the US, 
it is better or it is required or you are advised to take GRE in the advance. Another question which is related to GRE you asked is uh, I'll go to, well, still I'm all about the uh, GRE what about uh, the composition section of the GRE so there are three main sections one is verbal reasoning quantitative reasoning and analytical writing verbal reasoning is going to measure your ability to analyze and evaluate written material that is verbal reasoning quantitative problem solving so that is math arithmetic algebra geometry data analysis things related to math analytical writing it is critical thinking and the analytical writing skills so it's just ability to write it is almost writing essays so that is the three main section of the test this uh, exam you have to pay in order to do the exam how much you are supposed to pay what is the GRE uh, exam fee uh, the GRE exam fee is a uh, hundred and seventy five dollars this is since July uh, July 1st 2012 that is the fee 175 dollar and you have to go to the website you have to pay online and you have to find a test where you're supposed to do a, you go to the website and each almost each country is having a center so you have to find a center and contact with the local center and then you can do your test uh, you can have the free online practice test or materials when you go to the uh, main website of www.ets.org slash GRI you'll find you prepare for the test in that section you can go to each section but also they have uh, power prep sec, uh, power prep tool software so you can download the software you can practice on your computer for free and you see what is going and how you can get the good score uh, another question which is related to GRE uh, what, what, opportunity, what opportunities that I will be getting if I appear for this examination there are no opportunities as opportunities but rather if you plan to apply for master's degree especially in the US it is a good chance for you to apply and win a scholarship so the main advantage you will be having is to be a competitive candidate when you apply with a, someone who doesn't have GRE test score or sometimes most of the university they say you must have GRE so you'll be in a good position to meet the qualification to apply so I say second I want to know what will happen if I get selected for this exam you don't get selected this examination is on your own if you want to do you take the test that's all and it will not help anything if you don't plan to do your master's or PhD and especially in the US uh, another question is uh, I will be very grateful if you could tell me about the scholarship monthly salary system whatever so First of all, in a scholarship, they don't give you monthly salary. They give you stipends. Uh, they pay you for your tuition and fees, most of the scholarship. And then they give you stipend, the stipend which will cover you living costs. So they might give you maybe $1,500, uh, maybe up to $2,000. That is the average of many scholarship is one fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred maximum is twenty five hundred. It is very difficult to get monthly more than two thousand. It is very very difficult. It's around that way. So you have to apply, you get it, and then you will be getting the money for the course of study. While you are be studying as a student, you'll be receiving that amount of money. So remember that is not a salary. That money is a stipend to cover your living uh, living expenses, room and board. And then if there are if there are any fees required for the entire process the fees which are there is not you don't pay me I'm not concerned with money of anybody uh, my job is to give you information for free but what you're supposed to do there are some universities they require you to pay for uh, to pay for uh, for application fee so that is the only cost you'll incur but otherwise there is no inner cost and uh, I'll in one of the video I'll be talking about the application fee but just to make just a little about it is 
most of the universities in the US, once you apply, you have to pay for application fee. In Europe, there is no application fee, so that is easier. So if you want to apply, many universities apply in Europe, there is no application fee for almost every university. But in the US, majority of school, 98 to 99% of all schools will be applying in the US, you have to pay for application fee. It is $50 to $100. It depends on university to university. And there is no guarantee of being admitted and to get a scholarship. So it is better to apply many universities in Europe and then a few in the US. So in case you don't spend more money, it's application fee, unless otherwise you have enough money to apply for all those universities. I'm sure I have tried my best to respond to all your questions, Ms. Uh, Biswadip from India. I've tried to capture most of the questions. But uh, you can keep going to other videos. You might get more information, which will be very helpful for you to answer. I mean, is answers to your questions. So thank you very much, uh, Biswadip from India, and all other viewers who are asking questions. And I will try my best to keep applying. I mean, respond to those questions. And I'm sure you have enjoyed this particular piece of video. Please share with other other people, and also make sure that. You keep your dreams alive, keep applying, keep informed, get this video, go to other websites, look for information, learn, 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 and make sure that you share with another person. The best way to help someone is give him the information, give him the techniques and they can apply on their own. Don't give them fish, give them the way on how to fish. And that is what I'm doing and how I want you also to do. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. Goodbye.